Hey guys, today we're gonna to upgrade the Z-axis linear rails on my homemade CNC. We're gonna be taking it from limp to pimp. So I've got my dial indicator set up on the Z-axis slide. This is directly connected to the guides up and down. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply slight force left and right and see how much it deflects. So that was about 10 thou. It's come back to 2 thou. It about went to 12 thou. So let's go the other way. Same thing, about negative 10 thou in that direction. And it's about back at the zero. So now I'm going to push front and back. Again, about 10, 11 thou. And pulling on it. It's about 10, 9 thou, somewhere in there. So the same thing, 10 thou in each direction. So that was the first test done at fully retracted up. So now I'm gonna drop it down to somewhere around the middle. So let's repeat that test. Pushing left, that's around 8 thou. And pushing on the right, also seems to be about 8 thou. So pushing forward, it's about 8 thou. Back, somewhere around 8 thou. Maybe 7, maybe 10, depending on how I push. But. All right, so now I'm gonna drop it down to its lowest position and we'll do the last test. Let's start pushing to the left. That's about 5 thou on the right. Same thing, about 5 thou. Okay, so now front and back, push forward. It's about 10 thou. Back, it's about 9, 10 thou. Okay, so we're a lot better left and right than front and back. So that's our benchmark. So in order to get the Z-axis off, I first bring the gantry forward to make everything a lot easier to work on. I start by taking off the limit switches and disconnecting all the wiring for that. Then I remove the tie downs for the wire that goes to the router and the laser. And then I can start removing the router itself, the laser, and the switch that controls the fan on the laser on and off. Next, I can detach the coupler, which connects the Acme thread to the motor itself, and then I can go ahead and remove the four screws holding the motor onto the Z-axis. After that, I can remove the dust collection tube and start my work on removing the lower V-groove bearings. These are held on with those three inch bolts, which have lock nuts and then jam nutted together on. Both sides need to be removed on the bottom, but the top don't need to be removed at all. I didn't get any footage of it, but I did remove the four screws going through the Z-axis holding the X-axis motor on. That will stay in place as the Z-axis comes off. Next I can start removing the old linear guides on the Z-axis. I just use an Allen key to loosen these and slide them out from underneath. Now the only thing holding this in place is the Acme thread, which I need to drill two holes through the front of it so I can access the two screws holding the bottom pillow block in place. With that piece now detached, I can work back on the Z-axis and take the old hardware off. Over at the part that holds the router, I can take off all the sliding bearings and then detach the back piece, which holds on the Acme thread. Now I'm gonna reuse the piece that attaches to the Acme thread. So unfortunately I glued this on, so it just needs to be popped off with a chisel and then cleaned up later on the table saw. These U-shaped linear bearings that came with my new rails, they don't actually have through holes and that's my preferred method of mounting this. I didn't want to use machine screws. So what I had to do was drill out each hole and then countersink on the back side. Now on to mounting the new linear rails. I first lay down the spacer, which is actually the old linear rails, and then I shove a piece of cardboard near the top as when I was checking everything for square, that was the exact thickness, about 20 thousandths, that I needed to go in that direction to get everything into square again. Once the first two screws are in place, I then drill the rest of the holes with the self-centering bit and add screws to every single hole. To ensure parallelism between the rails, I cut a scrap piece of MDF 
This will make sure that they're the exact same width, top and bottom. So what I've done is laid out the four bearings on the bottom and then laid a piece of wood across the top to make sure they're flat. And then I can use my caliper to measure the distance between that piece that holds on to the Acme thread and the top of the slide. This is going to give me my distance of my piece of wood that I can cut, which acts as a filler. So in order to attach the bearing blocks properly to the Z-axis slide, I'm going to line up everything with some spacers and that shim in the corner is gonna keep everything more square, 20 thousandths of an inch. And then I'm gonna add hot glue to all the bearings, place the slide on top and push down firm, wait for the glue to dry. Then I'm simply gonna slide the entire assembly out the bottom, flip it over and start drilling holes into the back. Then I can remove the bearings, get rid of the old glue, and then I can add screws to permanently attach the bearings to the slide. I then do a quick check to make sure it actually does work before proceeding any further, and it looks good. After installing the pillow block and Acme thread on top, I then add some hot glue to that spacer piece for the new thickness of rails. I then add hot glue onto the top of that and install the slide, lifting up on the Acme thread, pushing that hot glue onto the back of the slide, creating a permanent bond. Then I can take it off again and add screws to the back to make it even more secure. The pillow block is then attached with both set screws and then the pillow block itself is screwed into place with two wood screws through the front of the slide where I made two holes to access when I was taking it apart. Next I cut two strips of Baltic birch plywood which is the same wood that everything's made of on the CNC. I drill three holes through each piece and then countersink. These strips are going to add much needed rigidity to the z-axis slide mechanism. I drive in screws to all six holes and leave about a sixteenth of an inch sticking out the bottom. That way when I press the piece of wood firmly against the back of the slide it leaves an indent where I can drill a small pilot hole. Then everything gets some glue and is screwed down firmly to act as a clamp. After reinstalling the Z-axis over travel limit switches, I can then install the dust collection tube and we're ready to reinstall this back onto the CNC. I start by simply hanging the Z-axis off the top rail of the X-axis and then installing the lower V-groove bearings into the Z-axis. These once again are tightened down and then jam nutted on with some lock nuts. I then loosened the dust collection tube as I had to slide it out of the way to get to the four screws which attach to the x-axis motor. I can now reinstall the z-axis motor which has a flat spot on the shaft which needs to be aligned with the set screw on the coupler. I then reattach it with the four inch and a quarter screws. The x-axis limit switches need to be screwed back on and the z-axis limit switches need to be rewired just simply sliding the spade connectors back in place. I can then reattach the x-axis over travel limit switches by screwing them onto the back of the z-axis. After that it's on to reattaching the laser and the switch that controls the fan on and off above it. I then loosely attach the first clamp that holds the power cables in place and then tighten down the clamps that hold the router in place. And with that, the upgrade is complete. Let's start testing. Okay, so we're zeroed out. We're set to the top position. Let's start pushing left and right.
looks like about two to three thou in each direction. All right, so we'll start pushing front and back. Two thou, pulling on it, is two thou. Again, pushing is about two thou. So two thou in both directions. Quite an improvement from before. It used to be 10 thou in all four directions. So let's move this down to the midway and do it again. Start pushing left and right. Two to three thou. Yep, yeah, two to three thou in both directions. Once again, quite an improvement. It used to be around 10 thou. Now let's measure from the front and back. Okay, pushing forwards. Looks like about one to two thou. Pulling back, two to three thou. Front and back. So once again, quite an improvement. Okay, now I'm gonna push left and right on our lowest position. Looks like about two to three thou in both directions. Okay, let's measure from the front. All right, pushing from the front, five, and pulling, yeah, about five thou. So overall, quite an improvement. I'm happy with it. And as always, thanks for watching.